don't care what you guys say. I still think Tic Tacs are better than TikTok. Older generation on TikTok, meaning like people born in the late 90s. everybody welcome to Friday uh, we are gonna be doing a couple of different things today but first I want to get through some announcements uh, if at this point you are still having trouble connecting to the Google slides um, I need you to do a couple of things um, the first one is you are going to make sure that your Google Drive is connected to your Schoology account um, there's a video on the district website if uh, you have any questions about how to do that. Um, I have also, if you didn't notice yesterday, started including a separate link to each of the Google Slides. I'm hoping maybe that'll solve some of the problems, um, but there's still a link at the bottom of each assignment, but then out in your daily folders, I've included a link as well. Um, it should be that when you click on that, it opens up Google Slides directly in Schoology, um, and I'm hoping that'll help. Um, if it's still not working for you, please let me know. We gotta get this figured out so that way you can start turn in, turning in some of your work and you're not getting too far behind. Um, we are gonna continue on, because I think we know what time of day it is. That's right, everybody. You know what time of day it is. It's time for the A-W-T-D, the ah to da It's time for uh, today, we are going to be talking about this guy right here, the guy with the glasses, the guy with the fading hairline. Uh, his name is Keith Haring. Uh, Keith Haring was born in 1958 and he died in 1990. He was only 31 years old when he died, so a really young artist. Uh, but he got really famous in the 1980s. Um, he started off living in New York, uh, making street art. He would take chalk and draw on the walls, his little figures. Uh, and he got so good at these and people started to notice them all over the place that they're like, hey, who's this guy? Who's making all these really cool artworks that we like out of chalk? Uh, and he came forward uh, and started becoming a gallery artist and people started hiring, hiring him to make murals. Uh, they started flying him all over the world to make his art. Um, as you can probably tell, his art was really simplistic. What he wanted to do was kind of make his own simple visual language. So he would make very bright colors. He would use very simple figures in all of his artwork. He did this so that way it would be kind of a more universal uh, experience. That way it didn't matter what language you spoke, what was, uh, where you were from, you could look at this and kind of understand immediately the mood of what was happening and what he was trying to say without having to use words. Um, many of his works of art uh, include these simple little dogs or these figures, these little stick figure-like things. Um, this is, though, our first openly gay artist, uh, and he made a lot of art about that. Um, I can't show you some of the ones that he made, uh, but he made a lot of art about social issue, issues and about AIDS awareness. Uh, he's probably one of our most controversial artists that we're probably gonna talk about. Uh, but I do think that his influence is so big that you can even find his artwork today uh, selling for lots of money. Uh, you've probably seen these types of figures before, even though he was only an artist for about seven, eight years famously before he died. Um, but I wanted to show you a little bit about Keith Haring and show you that even if you go simple with your artwork, it doesn't always mean that it's bad. So for those of you who are saying, I can't make art, you could definitely make the kind of art that Keith Haring's making. Um, but he just did it at a time and in a way that nobody was expecting. So I hope you learned a little bit about Keith Haring today. Uh, have a good day. We're gonna go back to the other part of the video and learn about what your assignment is today. All right, so your assignment today is we're gonna start combining everything that we've been working on, these seven different elements of art, and you get to create your own art using Google Slides. Uh, we're gonna use all those tools that we've learned how to use together. Uh, you get to create whatever you would like in there, but you have to make sure that you include three different elements of art. 
I'm gonna switch to the next part of the video so that way I can show you a little bit more specifics on what I'm talking about. All right, everybody, welcome to this part of the video. Um, we're gonna be talking about what your project is today. Uh, as you can tell, uh, we are still working in Google Slides, but today you get to have a little bit of creative freedom in what you're making. So just to reiterate, the elements of art is what we're talking about. Those are line, shape, space, texture, value, color, and form. Um, these are the building blocks of all works of art, and today you get to actually make some art with those. Um, what you're gonna be doing is this. Um, you are gonna be using these different elements of art and you're gonna be using Google Slides and all this fun stuff that we've been learning um, to try and make your own work of art in Google Slides. Um, when you're doing this, you must include at least three different elements of art. Um, and you have to be able to tell me which elements of art it is that you used uh, in your artwork. Um, I made a little example. Uh, this is stuff that I did right here in Google Slides. I was just using the shapes. I created some forms. Um, I added some texture with the building being broken up. Um, I've got color, I've got lines. Uh, so I'm gonna show you kind of how I did something like this. Uh, don't be too scared. You can do whatever you want. You do not have to make anything like what I am about to make. So. It's okay if yours looks completely different. As long as you are making something in Google Slides that includes at least three different elements of art, uh, then you are going to have done this correctly. Um, take a little bit of time though. You're gonna, you are gonna have all weekend to work on this. Um, so you're gonna be starting off here on this blank slide. Um, so what I first did in my example when I was creating uh, the background is I just went over and I chose a rectangle and I filled up eh, about half the space with a rectangle and then I changed the color of it and I made some green grass and then I did the same thing I came over made another rectangle filled in the top part and I made that by changing the color once again and I made some nice blue sky oh that is very blue we're gonna change that that's a little bit better. Um, so I've got my blue sky, I've got my ground. Um, I started making a road by just simply adding a triangle. We'll do one going off in a different direction this time, maybe this way. And then I changed that to the color of a road. Maybe a little bit lighter. Yeah, something like that. Um, so as you can see already, I've got some sky, I've got some foreground, and I've got an element that's going in here. Um, if you wanted to make the little dashed line going through the road, I'm just going to simply choose the line tool. Make a line that goes from here to here, right down the center. Change the line color to white. I'm going to increase the um, thickness of the line a little bit. And then I'm going to select this option right here for dashed line. Right now it's a solid line, but I can make it a dotted line. I can make it a dashed line. I'm going to make it a dashed line right now. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. If you didn't know this up here, this little magnifying glass allows you to zoom in. You can get really, really close if you want to. Um, but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that way I can see what's going on in my screen a little bit better. Um, so, I've got a couple of elements in here. Then I can start doing things like adding buildings or you can add other things. Um, buildings are pretty easy if you choose something like the uh, cube option over here. You can start making some rectangular prisms. Maybe these are gonna be, I don't know, maybe I want really big green, but no, that blends into the grass. Maybe some really big purple buildings this time. And I can just keep making more buildings. I can overlap them. Maybe I'll make this one red. Maybe instead of a cube this time, I'm going to add something else in. Maybe I'm going to add in some clouds. Ooh, big red clouds. That looks weird. 
Um, maybe I'll make them dark storm clouds. Ooh, yeah, I like that idea. But I think you're getting the idea. Just keep adding more and more elements to it, and the better it is going to look. Um, the more variety of shapes and forms that you put in there, uh, the more unique it's going to look. And the more details you can add in. Uh, yeah, let's go back to yellow. The more details you can add in, uh, you are going to make a more interesting work of art. Maybe I've got this going on. So if I wanted to call this done right here, I personally would probably keep going, add some more elements to it. Um, but if I'm looking at this right here, I've got color, I've got shapes, I've got forms, I've got lines. So that's at least four that I've got going on and there's probably more. Um, but when you're all done and you're satisfied with this, you're gonna go to the next uh, slide right over here and you're gonna tell me which elements you used. So tell me which elements of art you used and I have instructions here to click in this box and write which elements you used in your work of art. And I'll write, I used line, color, and <clears throat> forms. Not forms. Forms. Um, there's probably some value in there as well since those forms were shaded. So let's add that in there. So I used line, color, shape, form, and value. So right away, that was pretty easy. I, with that quick little thing that I made, I used one, two, three, four, five different elements. I used five of the cell, seven elements without even really trying. Um, take your time with this, have some fun with it. Uh, when you are all done with it, you are simply gonna do what we've done the last couple of days, go back to Schoology, submit it to the assignment, and have some fun with this. Um, I hope that makes sense. Remember that when you're doing this, you need to create your own work of art on the blank slide, and then you are going to write out which elements of art you used in your artwork that you created. So have some fun, have a good weekend. Uh, let's go back to the last part of the video. All right, I hope that was helpful. I hope it makes sense. So essentially, if you're doing this project and you include at least three different elements of art in whatever piece of artwork that you're making on Google Slides, then you did it correctly. It does not have to be a background scene like what I did with buildings and cannons and buildings falling apart, but you do have to make sure that you include a couple, uh, at least three different elements of art. And you have to be able to tell me which ones they are by typing those onto that Google slide in the presentation. Um, I hope that makes sense. Get creative with it. You have all weekend to work on it. Um, I wanna see what you're doing. Uh, as a bonus, if you notice at the bottom of today's uh, project uh, folder, so the, at the bottom of the Friday folder, there is an optional uh, thing in there. Uh, you are not getting graded on this at all. But if you have been making anything, uh, maybe it's a drawing, maybe it's a sculpture, maybe you painted something uh, during this time and you wanna show off some of your artwork, I wanna see it. Um, what I wanna start doing is next week, including a little section where I start showing off your guys' artwork so that way we can all see what we're doing together. Um, if you want to submit something to that, you can. It is not graded, you do not have to. Um, but if you have anything that you wanna show off or you wanna show me, uh, let me know. I want to see what you're doing at home. So I hope that's everything. If you have any more questions, please make sure that you are coming to the Zoom meetings or you're coming to my office hours or sending me an email. Um, it's the only way I know how to get in touch with you guys right now is if we are communicating. If you're struggling, please let me know. I want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Um, last thing before we leave today is this. Uh, I do notice that we got a bunch of missing assignments for some of you guys, um, and I want to make a bet with you, okay? If we can get 100% of the assignments turned in for this class, I will shave a mohawk and videotape it, and I will submit that by next Friday. 
So if by next Thursday, every single assignment that we have assigned so far is in, I will shave my head into a mohawk. It'll be interesting. Um, if we can get at least 90% of the uh, assignments turned in, I will dye my hair, I don't know, green or blue or something. You guys can decide. Um, and I'll do a live stream and videotape that on, uh, posted on Friday. If we can get at least 75% of all of the assignments in, uh, I'll do something else. Maybe I'll dress up as Santa Claus or something. We'll figure it out. Um, but I hope we can figure this out. Turn in those assignments. Get your friends to turn in the assignments. Uh, I'm not sure I want a mohawk, but I want to see what would happen if you guys turn in all of your assignments. And if we can do it by next Thursday, have every single student turn in every single assignment, uh, I will shave a mohawk and I will videotape it for you guys. So hopefully that's a little bit of extra motivation. Have a good day. I'm a little scared with making this bet, but uh, have a good weekend. I'll see you Monday. Bye.